you have any queries or any questions either you can post it in the chat box right away we will be picking that question at the end of the session if you think you are going to forget it otherwise you can pose these questions at the end we will all we will we'll be having a q and a as i was saying this is going to be just a gist of mental well being and a little uh, you know little peek to the mental well being uh, among civil service aspirants because mental well being as such mental health as such is a very wide topic uh, for us to complete or to go in depth and practice every technique just for your awareness to create an understanding that there are techniques which you can use when you feel stressed there are techniques which you, which will help you uh, for setting a goal to, to make you understand when there is a lot of pressure from society that is the kind of awareness we are trying to build and if that is done i would i would consider the session to be very successful uh, having said that so i would just quickly would like to know i know it's almost the end of the day and we ha you all had a week day weekend so how was your day how did your day go can you quickly tell me how were you feeling today how was your day in your chat box you can put your responses in your chat box yes was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Was it not so great day? You're still looking forward to have a good day. Again, this is not going to be a monologue where I keep saying things. It would be good if we are looking at an interactive session. So you can just post your uh, responses. Not so good. Still looking for a good day. Thanks, Kanan. I hope the rest of the day you find it fruitful and helpful it was just okay day okay good day thanks Prasida. yes so we worried about sunday to end okay thanks Saj. having completed two model exams not getting an expected marks still a good day that is really good that you still hold on and you're still hopeful that the day is going to, you know, turn out good. Yes, thank you. Good day. Tens of presentation on one day. I hope the presentation goes well. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the responses. So we all had different kinds of days. Still, we are all here. So probably we'll make this day a little more better. Uh, by a little more better by you know making this time useful and just having some interaction and understanding about where do we stand and what are the kind of stress that we are going through yeah so when we talk about health as such most of the time only in recent times we are including mental health in terms of health right till recent times we just had physical health when we say we are ill we are only ill because we are not keeping well in our physical health right either we are we are having fever we are not feeling great we are uh, having a cold we are having a headache so all these are affecting your physical well-being and imbalance to this well-being was only considered as uh, an issue right but later a uh, problem uh, in uh, 2000 i think in um, in uh, recent times who uh, put forth this definition where health is defined as the it's not merely the absence of a illness it's not just that we are not saying uh, we are good we are healthy when there is no when absence of illness is there rather we tell it we are healthy we tell we are healthy when we have a uh, complete state of mental well mental physical and social well being so it is a it is a balance of all these three and when all these three are well we tell we are healthy okay so as you can see mental health plays equal role as of physical health and also social well-being so we are all social animals as such so social well-being mental mental well-being and physical well-being is given equal importance and these are all interconnected as well so as we go forward we will see that as well so when we say well-being so mental health is one concept that we keep hearing right Mental health I mean, uh, is one concept and when we say well-being, well-being is more of a lighter terminology. 
uh, well being is uh, more connected to your day to day uh, activities and how you feel, how are you how are you feeling right now are you happy are you feeling content are you uh, were you able to function properly are you uh, you know uh, are you uh, feeling uh, are you having a good relationship with people so all these put together are well being so well being is more of a milder terminology but what happens well being is very important to have a uh, have a pleasant day and to have this day running every other day so this civil service as such is a is comparatively long process it's not that you are preparing you're starting to prepare today and you will end your preparation the in a month or in two months right at least a minimum of a year it takes uh, i think with all the examination prelims and means it it take it goes around 15 months of time and 15 months is not a short span imagine every day your mental well being is getting affected one aspect or the other you're slowly feeling uh, you're not feeling happy uh, you're not feeling satisfied you can't tell that you are having good relationship with others you are, you can't slowly your functionality is getting affected right so this slowly this whole change that is happening would lead to mental uh, would lead to severe issues in mental health okay so mental well being is one aspect of mental health but what happens when you don't take care today or every day it just contributes accumulates and it affects your mental uh, health okay so it is very important we understand mental well being and when we talk about mental well being it is uh, it is your uh, ability to adapt to a new environment it is your ability to feel good and also to function well majorly to cope with every other challenge that is coming across in every day and uh, we have positive emotions we have negative emotions to to you know to navigate between these when even when you have a negative emotion so, so some of you did say that you you are not having a great day right but you did understand you're not having a great day you're going to make some adjustment you're going to cope to it and then you're make going to make it a good day that is you trying to restore that balance you re, you're trying to restore that well being right and another important aspect of well being is development of one's potential so the idea of psychology uh, or one uh, one school of psychology itself is that human being has the full potential okay so that is the basic of counseling that we do uh, person centered counseling that we do where we we know that the client has the good full potential just that the client needs some guidance and need some tweaking to to get that awareness and insight that this is the problem this is the answer i want to reach so as a person you yourself has that full potential is the uh, is the is the understanding but what happens this potential get hindered when you are not able to function well when you don't have the right kind of mindset right so these this affect your uh, working and functionality and later leading to your uh, you know uh, hampering your mental health and then another aspect is having some control over one's life that is also very important in well being when we are, when we are talking about well being imagine you have zero control over life someone else have a control over over your life the actions that you are doing the thought that you are doing uh, everything that is controlled by someone it is very difficult to navigate through the day right so to have a proper well being to have a proper balanced well being that is important another is sense of purpose we are you are all here most of you are civil service aspirants some of you are still figuring out what you want to do right Ima that is also important to understand what is the purpose of your action what is the purpose of uh, of the decisions that you are doing if uh, uh, now you are all civil service aspirants why are you doing it there is a purpose to it there is some reason that you want to hold on to and most i i also strongly feel and believe that it shouldn't be uh, someone else's purpose it should be your purpose it should be something that you can make sense out of okay and then uh, uh, social connecting to social animals we always need people so one important aspect when it comes to mental well being among social service is social service aspirants is, uh, is the social support system that we will be dealing in the later part so uh, always having positive relationship also also important for the uh, well being 
so when we talk about this we also talk about we also understand how mind and body works right so let's say you are having a very low day uh, in terms of your physical health you woke up you woke up with a very bad headache and you have a high temperature and you are uh, you are you're not able to eat properly because whatever you're eating you're uh, you're not feeling you're feeling nauseous so what happens automatically your mind also starts to uh, come down according to your physical health right so there is a whole connection between this mind and body we when we talk about mind and body it's not just mind and body the new perspective is that we look health from a holistic view so it includes spirituality it includes mind body your environment the social system that you have all of that together contributes to your uh, holistic health is what the new perspective is so at least let's have an understanding that your mind and body works together one is if one is affected the other gets automatically affected so let it be uh, mind or the body it affects the other person so they function as uh, you know as a team uh, it's much easier for us to understand when we have a fever we feel down we don't want to work that day we don't want to go anywhere right the other way also works that is the that is the thing so imagine you're someone who always constantly have a negative talk to yourself you keep saying to yourself that you know no no i do look fat i don't i don't uh, you know i don't think i can do that i don't think i'm going to crack that i don't think so someone uh, if you have negative thinking pattern continuously that starts to show in your uh you know it affects your mental health and it starts affecting your physical well being also okay so this both just go hand in hand and there is a very strong connection between mind and body and that is also the reason why we have to take care of of mind body uh together okay so it's not just physical health that we talk about we also have to talk about uh, mental well being okay uh and as we discussed earlier when we feel low mental well being well being for a longer time let's every day after day what happens it starts accumulating today it's just it's a, it's just a bad day tomorrow and i'm not doing anything to cope with it tomorrow again i'm waking up and i'm feeling uh today at least i was okay till afternoon and i did my work and i was i was able to you know i called my parents i spoke to them uh, i somehow pushed myself to go to work all that was happening and after i came back i was not feeling great and i i, I did not think about it the next day i'm waking up and i can just see that yesterday i was able to work till afternoon but today it's like like till 10 i was okay but then slowly i'm i'm again going back to you know i i'm not feeling like talking to my parents i don't feel like calling anyone i don't feel like going at going for work i don't feel like uh having food i just i just don't feel like moving slowly what happens one day it is just 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 getting a scratch on your well being the second day it's just again a, a next line on the well being and slowly what happens it just starts twirling again and again and it just get tangled which ultimately leads to uh, mental health problems you understood so single stress if that is not tackled properly and if it is some recurring uh, recurring every day uh, and it starts having a mark on your neurological system and we are not philosophically just talking it starts having a mark on your neurological system and you start adapting to it the more and more you can see some people what happens is that you see them after four, four years or two years or three years you can see they are adapting mal adapting to something and they feel that is okay right that is because they get wired that way because that is how they were adapting so what happened they don't understand but there is a existence of mental health problem right so mental taking care of you every day every moment is important and when and it's okay so, some days you are going to feel bad some days you are going to have a bad day some days you are going to have negative emotions some day you are going to have feel low but we cope and we manage that is why all of us are born born with some innate coping strategies and we learn some innate coping strategies so that is uh, what we are going to talk about okay so i think this whole 
uh, idea of mental health and what men mental well-being is a little clearer now. So now we will just, I just uh, wanted to set that foundation. Now we will break it down and we will talk in terms of civil service aspirant. So just picking up the highlighters, it is about abilities of a person. When abilities, when your capability, when you are not able to, uh, you know, produce what you are supposed to, then we tell your mental health is getting hampered. When you are not able to cope with normal stress of life, every day everyone comes up with some stress. Morning, you are waking up, and I'm not. Uh, I mean, I'm not finding the right pair of my pair of dress that I I am supposed to wear today. That is a stress for me. Today I'm getting a medical report saying I'm uh, I'm diagnosed with cancer. That is also stress for me, right? So stress can be small, stress can be big, and how am I coping with that is important. So stress happens to every person, but how am I doing it? How am I coping with that? I have my examination coming up, and I'm taking previous year question paper. I did I did study for like uh, nine ten months. I prepared for this. and i'm doing my previous year question paper but i'm finding that i'm not able to answer that that is very stressful right that is highly stressful you worked for 9 months you prepared for 9 months and you are taking up one question paper uh, and you are not finding uh, you know you're not able to clear that question paper or you're not able to finish that question paper on time you will start self doubting right but from there you have to cope you have to make Uh, you have to understand and then you you have to keep working and come out of it right so that is coping with stress uh, stresses of uh, life work productivity what makes a human uh, you know different from other beings is the functionality right we work with some aim we wake up and we have certain uh, you know we have productivity we try to be productive in some way or the other productivity is again subjective my productivity my goals for the day is different from the other person but still am i being productive is my perspective right am i ticking off my to do list that that tells me if i'm productive or not and uh, uh, last to make to be able to make contribution to society to community that we are living in in many ways it doesn't just mean by uh, you living according to social norm and you living without harming someone else is also being cordial with the community so we all have some social norms that we follow and do are we able to give back to society are we able to play a role in the society is also very important okay so having said that from you i would like to know now that you are all thinking of being uh, taking up uh, or uh, approaching uh, take up ias examination which is one of the very i would say uh, you know uh, lakhs of students uh, take up this examination every year so uh, it's a very important examination the end result is also the reward that you get out of that is also big right the reward is big what you attain when you clear the ias examination is huge to reach that particular point is also little quite difficult i would not say it's easy just like uh, plucking a fruit it's not that easy it is very uh, it is quite difficult is what i would say so what are the what are some issues that you think a civil service aspirant might come across during this preparation time or while facing the examination what are some of the thoughts that you have that is coming to your mind when you think of uh, civil service examinations again you can put up your responses in the chat box uncertainty of the examination uh okay i think sankti has messaged directly so uncertainty of the examination you you don't know uncertainty in many ways right you don't know which question is going to come you don't know exactly how you have to you know it's just you get that one shot and you have to do it anxiety and depressing feelings that you have to handle a deal as you prepare yes yes uncertainty of the examination as one anxiety depressive feelings yes then anything else that is coming to your mind thank you thank you both of you so some of the thoughts again these are some of the thoughts some of the issues that lack of confidence uh, as you go as 
one problem is one thought is that it's just that it's it's a long process like it's it's about 9 months or 10 months or 12 months of preparation um, so it's a long process to retain this confidence is very important to retain this motivation throughout this process is difficult we might be confident now i am very confident now i'm motivated i want to study all that is there how do I retain this throughout this when I am I am facing a lot of challenges? Uh, uh, yes, a uh, lot of challenges and all that. So some of the uh, some of the uh, reasons that that came to uh, you know that uh, just stood down is one competition. Definitely, competition is uh, as I was saying lack. So students are approaching this examination. All of them are preparing in their own pattern, their own style. It is not like how you take up a uh, UG course and finish one examination where uh, you know you know what you're still you share your materials and you know what the other uh, person is up to. And you have some uh, midterm examinations. All of you take up the midterm examination, so you know where each one of you stay. Uh, and there is some angering point for you, right? This is a syllabus. This is where I st stand for my midterm, and I have to put this much of effort. Likewise, but it's the number of people who take up this examination is huge, and people keep repeating as much uh, as such is. Okay, uh, and then uh, next is uh, next thought is uncertainty. Biggest stressor that comes with uh, IAS preparation, so service preparation is the uncertainty uncertainty again connecting to the vastness of a syllabus you don't know how what what all topics to be covered just a minute i'll just admit a couple of them yeah what all topics to be covered right and uncertainty about the examination so when covid pandemic happened uh, the whole pattern changed and the timing changed everything shifted right so that uncertainty when when will the examination come will i pass or not because again when you if you don't pass this time uh, you have to give it a try the next time so uh, when do i clear my examinations that is also uncertain there is there is a age bar for this and there is you know so a uh, lot of uncertainty is there we will also see how uncertainty is related to our evolutionary point of view uh, vastness of syllabus there is no prescribed saying this is the boundary as we get for our undergraduation or PG, there is no boundary saying this is what you study. You come for the examination, study this and come. No. And then uh, there is continuous examination, right? Uh, it is not one examination. There is prelims and then there is mains and then there is interview. So there is continuous examination. Approaching one examination is stressful. Imagine when you know you have to go one after the other, one after the other that creates that you know that builds a lot of stress in you right and then there is we all live in a community where uh, culturally uh, we are all involved and we all uh, culturally uh, we we follow social norm, norms and there is a set pattern that is expected in uh, you know you complete your graduation in this this time you complete your uh, post graduation in this time you start earning in this time you give back to society in this time uh, sorry uh, home this time and you get married in this time and according to gender this uh, whole thing varies right according to gender the expectation varies so when you cross that particular age people start asking uh, why you're not going out you're not earning uh, i still see you home sitting studying and uh, trust me a lot of shame is attached to it so you know as when uh, when students when uh, students who prepare for ias come uh, they actually lock themselves in and study so that the other people don't know that they are there they are at their home studying because they've been studying for months and keep, people keep asking uh, why 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 he or she is not going out why he or she is not uh, you know not uh, being part of the social things events uh, but they are studying and they are not clearing the examination what is happening so we are very curious and there is this brings a lot of uh, difficulty for the uh, for the aspirants for the students lack of social system again with these social norms 
some of us some of the students will be blessed to have a, a solid social system let it be family let it be friends let it be people who are supporting uh, in any kind some of uh, some of the faculty will be supporting so some social system is there but uh, unfortunately many of us over the period of time uh, feel lonely or feel that lack of support over the period of time when you when you uh, when people see that you are not reaching that goal in the expected time like in the expected time that is fi fixed in their mind they were expecting you to finish it by this time but they you didn't so a lot of factors like guilt shame all of that is also attached to this and uh, facing the exam and one more thing i would add is the consistency issue again you start with uh, you start with uh, i'm motivated i'm well equipped i know the resources i spoke to people whoever is cleared i spoke to them all of that is done right but it just wanes up for us to just to uh, stay motivated and finish uh, let's say 21 days of challenge for fitness that is difficult imagine someone who have to wake up uh, every day at 4 or 5 and then uh, they have to just push themselves there is no one keep saying you know do it uh, or likewise not necessarily all the time but they have to have that drive throughout and most of the time we don't know how to create that drive every other time because there are also a lot of challenges that is coming as in terms of failures in terms of judgments so when all the challenges coming against you how do you drive through this just to clear that examination that is another thought we have okay uh so few factors that we discussed we will just touch that upon and then we will see some of the uh, techniques that we can use again this needs a lot of time uh, and you know we have to go in detail but quickly maybe i'll go in detail with one or two techniques which you can use uh, when you find it difficult okay so when we are talking about stress stress is something that all of us will face every day on a daily basis and to an extent it also helps in your performance so there is something something called as you stress which is like a positive stress you need some amount of stress for you to perform imagine if i'm someone who don't even feel i'm not even worried about my examination we have met people like that we had uh, have had friends like who just come up for the examination no stress at all maybe they sleep a half of the time so that affects the performance so some amount of stress is good but there is also a thin silver lining beyond which it becomes distress right again uh, stress is also very subjective where you can't say that uh, my i'm saying i'm feeling stress up around 80% and uh, let's say gaurav sir is saying i'm feeling around 50% my 50 uh, his 50 and my 80 is not going to be on the same metric system right what i feel is what i feel what my stressors are my stressors maybe i might not even be able to tell it to someone let's say uh, i am preparing and let's say anamika is also preparing right we are following the same syllabus but one particular subject one particular topic is i'm not able to grasp grasp that i'm not able to study that that is a stress for me but for anamika who's very uh, well versed and you know can actually study the whole syllabus quickly she feels that is not that hard right no stress is subjective i feel stress and uh, i'll only understand what kind of stress i'm going through we have measurements to measure stress but again stress is either measured in uh, trait anxiety or you know something that has been consistent you can only get a range you can't get the absolute number that you are feeling that stress for so there is no metric system as such to measure stress one major stress for civil service aspirants is uncertainty right uncertainty with uncertainty comes ambiguity you don't know what you have to expect Ima uh, remember the first few days or let's say even few months of pandemic there were lot of mixed messages about how to take care of your health what all you should take what all you should not take how do this particular uh, virus uh, get transmitted uh, there were assumptions that it get transmitted through air the, uh, when you when you are standing 3 uh, meters 4 meters away it get uh, transmitted so lot of assumptions were there and ultimately so there was lot of ambiguity 
and we all did survive right some of them were not able to survive through uh, covid as well but along with that uncertainty came the threat right and according to evolution itself you know according to darwin's theory it is on the survival of the fittest second one we are always focused on survival and reproduction so when there is a threat your quickest uh, your body get adapted to survive your body get all aroused and be like you know i'm ready to fight uh, so with that uncertainty comes a lot of uh, ambiguity and you don't know what you want you have to expect so when you're worrying without knowing what to expect that becomes anxiety okay that is how stress takes up the form of anxiety so you don't know what you have to expect you don't know what you have to study you don't know when you are going to clear all these are threats you uh, you combine this particular with, uh, threat with uh, you know with uncertainty gives you the anxiety so uncertainty is one of the biggest stressor again what are the few so when you get stress there are certain bodily changes that come to you right when you feel stressful there are certain reactions that come to you what are some of the reactions that come to you for everyone it is different uh, you know some of you might get headache some of you might feel uh, you know some of you will lose appetite so what are some of the symptoms that you get when you feel stressful not just in terms of uh, you know when you are preparing civil service generally anyone is there any other physical difficulties that you get when you are stressful when you are much worried about things when you feel overwhelmed you get a angry mood your mood changes headache yes blood pressure varies yes you can actually feel your heart beating faster you feel you know uh, yes blood pressure varies any other response fatigue you feel tired sometimes some people goes to very angry mood some people go become very silent uh, mood yes you sweat you start sweating you start palp uh, you know you start tremoring right so what happens is that angry mood yes thank you thank you for the responses so what happens is that when you uh, when you when you uh, you know when you uh, encounter a stressful event or a stressor your body quickly turns to fight or flight mode that is you either uh, you know run away from this or you stand fight again this is this is uh, just a basic evolutionary perspective you either fight it or you fly okay you your body quickly switches to that according to that your uh, nervous system also starts working your heart your body gets prepared for whatever you're going to do your heart, your heart rate increases your you know your dilation of the eye people changes uh, your blood circulation changes you start sweating your digestive starts system start uh, slow down in their function uh, so all these changes start, automatically happens to acute either to fight it or to fly from that situation so what happens at that moment itself your brain also just freezes your uh, prefrontal cortex where uh, you know you where you keep taking decisions it just switches so that is how most of the time we feel overwhelmed right we don't know what to do and we just do whatever the first reaction that is coming to us because for some time there is stress hormone that is working in us with that particular point of time we either decide to stand and fight that particular thing or we fly what happens in a you know in a uh, for a civil service aspirant is that you don't have you know for you to fly or you for you to move away from the situation is very difficult you have to you are left with no choice you have to stay there and fight right so what happens is that you you automatically become stressful and this stress just prolongs with you as a civil service aspirant what uh, most of our focus goes to just 
completing the syllabus and we because we have a particular syllabus that has to be followed or at least we have a rough topics that we have to follow no matter what i know i'm stressful i know my uh, thoughts are just uh, all over the place but still i want to complete this you will try to complete you will not be able to study but again this stress uh, you know all these symptoms start coming up right so some of you might have cry spell some of you burst with anger you start having difficulty over the period of time you will start start seeing that you either eat a lot or you don't eat at all and you also start uh, losing interest in act, uh, daily activities and uh, you either sleep a lot or you don't even fi uh, you, you find it really difficult to sleep uh, your behavior changes your appro your social interaction changes and uh, it is also connected with a lot of guilt helplessness hopeless all these symptoms starts popping up okay so what can you do to to face this uh, again these are not these are not the only techniques that we have to cope with anxiety there are a lot of uh, techniques we will just quickly see few uh, one the easiest quickest way when you are feeling overwhelmed is to focus your attention to the breathing that is just focus how you inhale and that air gets through your nostril goes to your uh, lungs and slowly you exhale again it just comes out through your nostrils so we focus our uh, you know we uh, we just bring our focus to that particular breathing pattern so what happens one you distract your focus from whatever was causing stress another thing is that you're telling your body that no you're relaxed right you are taking in your intake of oxygen increases so your nervous system if your you know your heart rate was high all that all that starts getting relaxed when your body gets gets relaxed automatically your mind starts to feel relaxed so remember that mind body connect so that just parallelly works and when your body starts relaxing when you say your body you know relax you get your sufficient amount of oxygen now you breathe so slowly your heart rate just decreases so according to that your uh, your nervous system also be starts believing that okay there is no nothing to be worried you can slowly calm down right so so there are a lot of breathing techniques that you can see uh, i'm not very sure if we have time but quickly i'll give you one example of how you can do breathing one is regular breathing that you can do right just it's not just uh, for you know even if it's a minute stress or even when you uh, practice breathing exercise every day it just helps you a lot to bring that balance so one is generally focusing your attention to breathing inhaling slowly and exhaling another another type of breathing is something that you can uh, do is that fire breathing or box breathing so how you do it is maybe you can also try it along so uh, how you do that is that uh you start from here okay you can see a start here you start from there you breathe in for 4 seconds like you breathe in for 4 seconds you hold that for 4 seconds you exhale for 4 seconds and hold it for 4 seconds so breathe in hold breathe out So that is what square breathing is. So you slowly breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds, you exhale it for four seconds, and then you again hold it for four seconds. So this is called as square breathing, which uh, is also a technique that comes under mindfulness. So this also helps. Okay, this is something that you can do. Another thing is uh, so. Here you can see uh, we have breathing techniques and then there is also guided imagery. So easiest way for guided imagery are there are few apps that helps in guided imagery. So guided imagery at least you might have you might be familiar where you take you take your whole focus to a pleasant picture that you have. Let's say uh, whichever is your pleasant picture. Let's say if it's a beach for me it's a beach. I imagine myself in that particular situation. I start uh, I start to imagine the details 
how the waves are coming and how the waves are hitting my uh, feet and how what I what is the feeling that I'm getting when that wave hit my feet and how does the sand feel is it uh, you know and is it a sunny day what is around so I'm creating a very pleasant mental picture where again you are you know you are uh, taking your uh, whole uh, thought and focus to a happy picture doing exercise daily physical activity helps to maintain your well-being not just in terms of stress but in terms of well-being uh, time management takes off lot of anxiety and stress because you know what you are expecting right you are bringing some kind of certainty to there social support is very important uh, seek social again we will discuss uh, social support seek social support where uh, you know where you can talk to people where you don't have to you know where you your guilt or whatever negative feeling you have don't enlarge rather it just shrinks and they they give you that particular support okay uh, then leisure activities always make sure most of the time what happens when you start preparing you sit straight 14 hours 15 hours or there are people who even you know uh, try to uh, prepare for 16 hours 18 hours a day which uh, which if it is working well and good but it is not uh, it might not be helping your mental well-being at the end okay uh, so always have find at least 10 minutes or 20 minutes for your initial activity another easiest and very effective way is journaling so journaling can be anyway journaling is you writing it down so how in, uh, in childhood we, we used to write the diary journaling is found to be very effective to give to get insights also most of the time what happens there are a lot of thoughts coming in i want to study this portion i'm not able to study uh, i did not go for that function so parents are quite angry about me uh, at me and i did not have my lunch i'm feeling hungry i'm trying to i'm looking at this particular portion but i'm not i'm, I'm my whole mind is uh, totally with uh, filled with lot of thoughts the easiest way is to write it down uh, you can just write it down either you, uh, it can be time bound saying i'm going to write it down whatever coming to my mind for 15 minutes or you can just write it down until you feel relieved and you go back and you check so when you go back and read it gives you a third person a third person perspective it gives you some insight about what is triggering you what is the exact problem what you should be doing now how you know so you will be reading it you, you will be reading your thoughts there so you will be judging it from a third person perspective and understand this this is not helping me now this is helping me maybe i'll go have food then i'll talk to my parents why i was not able to come then i'll come back and sit, start studying right so you can either free writing is one pattern of writing you can just write uh, or you can also uh, uh, you use prompts even gratitude journaling is one kind of prompting where you are going to write three things that you are thankful for right now so daily writing a gratitude journal helps you to stay rooted as well as it uh, it is also you know a prompt for you to anchor your thoughts and everything or another is the thought the thought diary so for people who find it very difficult to express and along write it in paragraphs you can divide your page into case feeling thoughts illusion and reality uh, thinking so case what is the thought what is the uh, problem at hand and feeling is what are you feeling right now are you feeling bad are you feeling angry are you feeling uh, happy are you feeling guilty are you feeling lost so what is your feeling now so case is the problem feeling is what you're feeling right now thinking what are the thoughts that is coming in relation to that so you will write what all uh, thoughts uh, you have illusion what, what are the thoughts that is not in parallel with reality uh, what are the thoughts that you are thinking about the possibility saying me thinking you know uh, i just did not finish one portion and i'm feeling i'm not going to clear this examination i don't have that capacity to uh, i don't have that capacity what it takes to be a civil service aspirant all that and then what is the reality what is exactly reality i did not study this particular portion i might want to take extra time stay extra time or fit in this portion in the next tomorrow's plan right so this is how thought di diary works you can divide this particular journal and do it 
Okay. Now we are talking about goal setting. Uh, I would like to know how many of you have, all of you will have one goal right now, right? Uh, if you could share what is your goal right now that is there in your mind, except that the session should get over, except that what is the goal that you have for, uh, that you have right now? It can be short term goal, it can be long term goal. What goals do you have right now in your mind? Anyone? Clearing the exam, okay. Then clearing the exam, yes. Okay. Completing today's task. So you have, I hope you also have some to-do list that has to be done, clearing the examination. So uh, in goal setting, most of the time, the mistake that we do is that we either give, we either plan for less challenging tasks or we plan for overwhelming, exhausting tasks. Let's say I might have a to-do, my goal is to be happy every moment. Uh, thanks, Kanan, for responding. So yes, we will also talk, we'll talk about these goals. So some of, uh, two of you have told clearing the examination, uh, one business told completing today's task, and uh, my goal is to be happy ever, uh, every moment is another goal that you have. We will be discussing, we'll be coming back to this. So what happens is that, according to the uh, goal setting theory itself, we have a arousal state. We have an optimal level for every activity. So let's say if I'm, I'm, I'm taking swimming, for me as a person, there is an optimal arousal level, okay? If my arousal uh, is congruent with that level, my performance will be good. If it is over that, my arousal is higher than that, or uh, uh, what happens is that I feel overwhelmed. I will not be able to uh, do that particular, I will not be able to perform that particular task. If, if I feel that particular task is less difficult, or let's say I do, I, my arousal level is below that optimal level, what happens? Boredom hits. This is how humans work. For every activity, every person individually has the optimal level. So some of the activity you find yourself very uh, aroused, right? And you find it very interesting, which means that particular arousal is just, uh, just falling in that particular optimal space. So as you can see, even in this particular, uh, in this particular uh, graph, there is a flow channel where things flow very, uh, very uh, smoothly. Sometimes when we are keeping challenge, what happens? It just goes above. We just exhaust and pack a lot of things together, thinking, let's, let's, you know, maybe I, I target 10 things today. Even if I, you know, finish five things, that's okay. But what happens? That overwhelm you. The next day when you're looking, you have only done half of it. Next day, again, five, five extra tasks is added to your pending list, right? What happens when you have, when you keep a very low level of uh, task that bores you, you will be thinking, it's okay, it's only five units, right? We can just take small example of your intern, uh, you know, uh, internal examinations or your uh, your UG examinations or your, you know, your examinations that has happened in your schools. What happens? If you, no, no, it's okay, we can study. It's just one unit, it's just two unit. We feel it's less difficult. It's less challenging, right? So what happens? We will not study until the next morning we, because we knew that we know that it's okay we can do it right so that is the problem with that so when you're setting goal make sure you're setting a goal that that is appropriate for you and that is something that you can that fits into your optimal level again uh, sometimes uh, when you set overwhelming goal just come a little below and set it slowly build on that okay uh, since we are talking about goals and some of you have responded, every time when you're setting a goal, there are different ways of setting it. One easiest way or one thing that you can always keep in your mind is to have smart goals. Okay. So now I'll tell you what these smart goals are. You can think how you can modify these goals that you've already told and uh, bring more definition to it. Okay. So when we are setting a goal, make it very specific. Let's say, uh, 
clear and specific when i say examination which examination uh, i'll just tell the components one s s stands for specific m stands for measurable uh, you bring quantities you define it based on the numbers let's say i'm saying i want to clear the examination there is a lot of difference between i want to clear the examination i want to clear the examination in the next cycle i want to clear the examination in 2024 uh, i want to clear the examination in 2025 so it this makes a lot of difference so you are modifying this goal you are making it more measurable second is a uh, third one is attainable make this or uh, you know uh, modify this goal in terms of the attainability of it check if you have any uh, you know if you have enough resources check if you have uh, you know uh, is it attainable uh, do, do your capabilities align with your goal so check all that and keep a attainable goal third one is relevant will this goal help your career is it very important to you will attaining this goal add to your uh, journey wherever you are heading to will will it add to your journey uh, last one is time bound so uh, set a time based plan so when you are creating a goal let's say i'm i'm saying i want to lose weight that is very vague right i'm saying i want to lose uh, 10 kilo in uh, in 10 months that gives some measurement to it that gives some time to it and that goal is very attainable uh, i know what are the ways i'm going to do i might uh, do a calorie deficit diet i might do heat and gym so i know what what are the ways to reach that and that is very relevant for me because i my goal uh, maybe my long term goal is uh, aligning with this and it adds to my confidence or it is highly uh, subjective so uh, it uh, how, how relevant it is so this is how you define a goal always make sure rather than just thinking i want to complete this portion when are you going to complete it how are you going to complete it how long are you going to take this right so bring lot of specificity to this particular goal when you say uh, you want to clear the examination what which all examination do you want to clear when are you going to clear that and what are the kind of ways you're going to reach that how that exam is relevant to you how clearing ias is relevant to you okay so this is one way of doing goal goal setting when you're doing a goal setting it is important you break it down so if time permits i'll also with the permission of uh, gautam sir i'll share some worksheet where you can actually write down if you if you're finding it difficult you can break these goals and understand what these are what these components are then define your goal and again break it to one year if you are going to do this for one year break it to six months and see what you are going to attain break it to one month and see what you are going to attain break it to a week and see what you are going to attain and tomorrow prepare a to do list to check what you are going to attain today so what happens your to do list adds up and reaches that one month goal that adds up reaches your six month goal that adds up and uh, reaches your one year goal invest in your goal goal setting plan okay so that is some of the component stress goal setting another one another very important thing is to equip yourself it is not about knowledge it is about competency the skill is very important uh, you 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 know uh, you have to be it is a competition it is an examination you should know how to go about this preparation you should uh, you know you should tackle it and you should know about all that but it's not just about knowledge gaining it's not just about acquiring knowledge you should also be able to produce that imagine you you got all the knowledge you have studied everything if you have not equipped yourself in terms of skills and in terms of if your attitude and uh, all that you will go to the exam hall and there is a high chance that you are not able to reproduce that right so be prepared be equipped for this particular challenge and be systematic and consistent over time always one important thing is see your previous year question papers as a simulation ground where it is it is not just for knowledge gaining it is to increase your skills your time management skill your you know how you balance how you manage uh, and write that particular question paper how are you approaching that question paper uh, are you going from tough to uh, easier or are you going to easier to tough all that is important 
okay so competency equip yourself is another thing always be reminded that you all have same goal but you can always have different pathways you always will have different pathways based on the uh, individual characteristics right you uh, most of the time what happens you we listen to the toppers people who have cleared the examination or people who have been uh, preparing for the examination which is really good because sharing experience gaining uh, experience and uh, knowledge from other people helps you to prepare yourself but don't blindly follow them stop the herd mentality where you follow blindly what the other person is doing the other person is studying for 18 hours i'll study for 18 hours the other person followed this timetable i'm following this timetable it will not fit into your timetable and slowly what happens is that you will not be able to fit you will not you will be running around with this particular plan you will not be going in any direction you will be just going in circle trying to fit in this particular timetable with the amount of uh, you know work that you have all that ultimately you will start feeling that you are not capable you can't uh, you can't even finish one day's goal right how am i going to reach that so uh, understand individual differences your goal your setting goal your planning your timetable changes according to your learning pattern according to the aptitude you have for particular subject so every subject your paper 1 paper 2 will have you have a different aptitude towards each paper you might be good at one paper you might not be good at the other paper so your aptitude towards each paper uh, your social support system is different from the other people your tolerance for stress is different your tolerance for any kind of psychological factors different and different kind of privileges also is there so some of you might be studying from home where you don't even have to uh, you know you where you you are not expected to cook you are not expected to uh, you know uh, clean uh, you you not ex you get your food you sitting in, you are sitting in a room uh, you have when you go back it's not just about the facility when you go back you have your parents or your family to talk to and when you are stressed they, they they are there to support many of you would be going somewhere to get prepared because you don't have a uh, you might be having a dysfunctional home or family uh, you might be having you might not be having enough facility just because you are not able to sit at home and study you might be going so where you are expected to cook or you are at least expected to take care of yourself you have to spend some time with your uh, daily routine and all that so all this varies right but doesn't mean one person gets higher uh, higher time uh, and the other person don't it's not like that there is a particular space where you can actually focus and study which is around 6 to 8 hours but uh, for a civil service aspirant i know it is not enough right uh, but slowly build on it slowly understand what works for you which timetable works for you which system works for you and then adapt to it okay so that is how you cope with things you try you test it if it is working you hold on and you develop on that if it is not working you rework on that system okay uh, social support system <coughs> so social support system changes for every person one you can see that there is a predictable social support your how other person behaves is not in your hand and social Uh, support needs effort needs energy no matter how how much you say that you know you don't uh, it's okay you can uh, your friend and you call once in a year or uh, twice in a year you we are all social animals and we can't uh, stay alone we can't survive alone we need a group that is how evolution wise we have been trained to right so we need that support and uh, most of the time uh, what happens is that we might not be getting that support and uh, we are also very uncertain about lot of things which start affecting the relationship all kind of relationship let it be is relationship with the parents relationship with the friends and also your emotional vulnerability will be very high when you are going through these process so what happens your reactivity increases that hampers your relationship all that affects so have some predictable social support where you know you can go and you can uh, you know you can talk to them and you get a little clarity than bringing back a lot of emotional problems and also uh, difficulties
right because when you're vulnerable when you're emotionally vulnerable let's say you walk in and your friend say hey you're studying so much and you don't seem to clear even one paper what is happening that might affect you so much at that point of time right so you need a predictable social support and also very important that you vocalize your problems you vocalize your uh, you know availability to them imagine you keep dropping plans that is because you want to prepare and you think they should understand but they will not and they will think that you are always dropping plans and she is not uh, engaged as before maybe we sh she should not belong to this uh, belongs to our belong to our friend group right so be vocal about uh, be give some certain idea to them saying you know uh, i have i am preparing from this time to this time this time i am free i would like to talk i would like to catch up on or if you are unavailable tell tell them that you are unavailable and you would like to catch up any other time maybe to, uh, next week i am a little free i would like to catch up with you all if that is okay with you so have that communication where you can give some certain answers and be always uh, vocal about the uh, you know about the things that you are going through and emotions that you are going through so that other person know don't expect others to judge and understand oh yes yes that person is going through so much and i should understand most of the time it don't work like that and it's much easier when you keep a very transparent communication system it, it is easier for your, your emotional regulation also okay uh, i think uh, we are coming to the end of this particular uh, session very importantly uh, how do we deal with criticism because uh, criticism come from different places it come from the closest family member uh, it comes from the uh, you know it comes from uh, people uh, maybe from the extended family from friends from people unknown from uh, social media platforms lot of criticism comes from around and as i was saying very vulnerable at this point first and foremost thing is to respond take some time and respond and not to react always always try to have a rational mind and uh, importantly criticism can be constructive or destructive selectively pay attention to the criticism you you decide if you want to pay to this or not and if you feel it is a destructive criticism saying you know uh, someone is saying hey you can't do this i don't think you it's, it's there in you to take, uh, complete all this please uh, you know ignore those criticisms understanding that those are destructive destructive criticism someone is saying lot of things and they are, uh, your mother is very much worried and saying uh, why you be why are you not acting like this or so many things and she says that you know you're not eating properly you're not sleeping properly uh, like that right if someone who is about to react might not even listen to this react so what happens you're not getting what that person is trying to say so listen if it is a constructive criticism try and imbibe what you require so when someone is saying you are not eating properly when you someone is saying you are not sleeping properly that might be coming from a place of concern think take that and think if that is the right thing if it is true and have a rational decision and if it is true then work on it if not then you can uh, you know you can just ignore it so pick your battles you don't have to fight all the battles uh, and also always have in mind that you are uncertain about lot of things like similarly like you your people around you who have a uh, uh, you who have real concern are also going through uncertainty your parents your uh, family your friends they are also going through uncertainty and they don't have any idea how to deal this also maybe not even as you have right so also be a little empathetic for them uh, for them as well be considerate about that also understand that uncertainty is there for all of them it is all new for everyone and uh, yes so these are a few things i wanted to discuss and also uh, make sure that you are coping well and you are rebouncing you are resilient and you are getting back if not there are also possibilities for you to take help and uh, seek help voice out ask help from your uh, family friends they are all ready to help you and uh, again as i told these are all small topics that we touched upon they they are there are details to it and techniques that you can do for yourself to take care and make sure you are keeping your well being intact uh, probably we will also discuss all this in detail in the upcoming sessions 
uh, and I'm very happy that uh, IPM has made psychological well-being sessions as a part of the uh, as a part of the uh, curriculum. The sessions that they have planned out, they have planned two sessions a month, and which is great because now you know the support that you get when you have a proper well-being, when when you have a balanced well-being is it is an added bonus and it helps you rather than. When, the, when it is absent, that is when you find it difficult. It's more like, you know, when you're functioning physically, well, it's all going, uh, you don't appreciate anything. We don't generally appreciate uh, how good we can see, how we, good we can hear, only it starts damaging. That is when we feel, oh, now my vision is not okay. I have to wear a glass. I have to wear a hearing aid. It's the same with mental health also. Only when it is getting hampered, we start appreciating it. So we'll be around to help you also with all of this throughout your journey. And I'm wishing all the best to all of you. Uh, and thank you, IPM, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And I hope this was uh, there, there was some takeaway from the session as well. Thank you. Over to you, sir.